Hello all, so I'm in this 2016 Toyota Camry and I got a TPM S light that won't go off and all the tires have the right air pressure, they're all aired up so very likely there's a bad TPM S sensor so I thought I'd make a video on how you go about troubleshooting this find the tire that has the bad TPM S sensor how you could buy a replacement how you could program the new TPM S sensor and how you go about installing it so this is a 2016 Camry but this is going to be pretty much the same procedure for like 95% of the vehicles out there. Whether you got a Chevy, a Ford, a Lexus, a Nissan, whatever you have, it's pretty much going to be the same across all these vehicles. So the first thing to do when you get these TPMS sensor lights is that be sure that all the tires have the correct air pressure. And one quick way to go about testing that usually is that when you first start up the car, if that TPMS sensor light flashes for like the first minute, then that means that the computer is not communicating with the TPMS sensor. But when you first turn on the vehicle, if that light just stays solid and it doesn't flash, then usually that means that a tire just needs air. So I'm going to turn this off for a second and I'll show you what I mean. So it's off and I'm going to go and restart it. And if that light flashes for like the first minute, that TPMS sensor light, like it is right now, then that usually means that there's a bad TPMS sensor or the computer's not communicating with the TPMS sensor. And it'll do this for the first minute before it goes solid. But if you start the vehicle and that light's solid, be sure to go check all your tires. Be sure they got the right air pressure because one of the tires just might have low air pressure. This vehicle does have a bad TPMS sensor. So the next thing I need to do is I need to locate which TPMS sensor is bad on this vehicle. And so a real quick basic overview of what's going on with these sensors is that there's going to be one at each wheel. They have little batteries built into them along with Wi-Fi and they're broadcasting a unique identifying number to the vehicle's main computer and they're transmitting what the tire pressure is inside the tire. And so each TPMS sensor is going to have a unique identifier number. It's usually labeled right on the sensor. For example, right here, this one's 29816D. That would be the main identifier number for this TPMS sensor. And basically the computer needs those unique identifier numbers to communicate with that TPMS sensor. And so you can't just swap out one of these sensors without reprogramming that number into the computer or doing what's called cloning a TPMS sensor where you copy that number to a new one. And so that gives two options when you go to replace one of these. You can reprogram the main vehicle computer and add this number in, this new TPMS sensor number, or you could get a new sensor and just clone that number. That way you don't have to deal with the main computer or anything like that. All you do is just copy that unique identifier number to the new sensor. And so to do this, you're gonna need some tools. It really can vary. There's a lot of tools out there to do this with. You can use a dedicated tool like this Maxi TPMS. This is the one I'm gonna be using. But you can also use other tools like a dedicated scan tool like this. Some scan tools will have the option inside there where you can reprogram the main computer with these unique identifier numbers. Most people don't go this route since these are the more expensive scan tools. But for example, if you have like this Autofix D1 Lite that does have an option inside of there where you can reprogram the computer with the new TPMS sensor unique identifier numbers. This can also be a little bit tricky because when you go to do that, you need to know which each tire unique identifier number is before you go to enter it in. So that can be a little bit more trickier sometimes, but it is an option if you have a good OBD2 scan tool. Some of them do have an option in there where you can reprogram the main computer. There's also dedicated tools for this, like this Alltail Maxi TPMS. And this is a really good option. It has a lot of really nice features in there that just have to do with the TPMS sensor. For example, you could go to each tire, or each wheel, and you can automatically scan those TPMS sensors and see if they're working. And if they are working, they'll give you the number that's on there. They'll give you that unique identifier number. You can also clone a TPMS sensor so you don't have to deal with the main computer or anything like this. So this is a really good option. A lot of people use it. The one downside to using this Altel Maxi TPMS sensor or any dedicated tool really is that when you want to clone the TPMS sensor, it has to be an Altel TPMS sensor. So for example, here's an Altel reprogrammable TPMS sensor. But if you do go this route, if you do use like this Altel Maxi TPMS tool or any of those dedicated tools, really, they need to match the sensor if you want to clone them. They can only clone the sensor that matches the scan tool. So in this example, this Altel, you'll still be able to do everything else, use all the other functions and things like this. Another really cool feature about this Altel Maxi TPMS is that if the old TPMS sensor goes bad and you can't read what the old unique identifier number is, you can hook this up to the OBD2 port in the vehicle and it will pull that unique identifier number that you need to clone the new good TPMS sensor. 
If none of this makes sense, I'm going to go through all the steps on how you go about doing all this. I just wanted to real quickly give a breakdown of how these TPMS sensors work and the options that you have to reprogram the new one that's going to be put in. This Maxi TPMS TS508WF, you can't buy a whole kit that comes included with these sensors, or you could buy this by itself and buy the sensor separately. So if you go to look and buy one of these, then you will see different prices and things like that. And that's because in some kits, they include more sensors. I'll put a link down in the description box below for everything I'm looking at here to this Altel Maxi TPMS tool, the sensors, or any of the tools and things that I'm using in this video. If you want to know more about them, just check the description box below and I'll put links down there. But basically that's it. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go out to that Camry and I need to figure out which tire has a bad TPMS sensor. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm out at the vehicle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and scan each TPMS sensor with this Maxi TPMS tool and check to see if I can read it. And if I can't read one, then I know it's bad. And it has these easy to use buttons, so I may be selecting yes and no, and then this Wi-Fi signal when I need to read it to use this menu. So the first thing I'm going to select, I'm going to select this quick mode. This is a Toyota. It's a Camry. And here I need to select the year. I know for this one, it's going to be option number four. If your vehicle shows up like a bunch of these, sometimes you get like five, seven of these for the different transmitter types that the vehicle might be using. If you're not sure which one it is, just select one, go and see if it works. Scan two or three tires and just go down the list until you find one that works. It's because sometimes the years can overlap and things like this. So if you do run into that problem and it won't scan, just try the next one down the list until you get one that scans for your vehicle. Well, I know this model, the 2016 Camry, is going to use this option number four here. So I'm going to go and select that. And you can scan all sensors and you just go around each wheel and scan them. But I'm just going to select the scan single sensor just to find out which sensor has gone bad. So I'm going to go and select that. So now I'm going to go around each tire and I'm going to press this Wi-Fi symbol when I'm close to the TPMS sensor. And there it is. You can see the information. Hopefully you can. Let me get it down inside the shade here. So as you can see, it says ID, hex. That's a unique identifier number for this sensor. It's also going to show you the tire pressure, the temperature, and if the battery's okay with the voltage. So I know this one's good, so I'm just going to move around until I get one that doesn't work. Okay, so I'm back, and I went around and I scanned all these tires, and I found the bad one. It's this driver's side front tire. And basically, I went around and scanned them all, and they all read, except for this one. This one's giving me a trigger failed. So I know this is the one I need to replace. And so basically when this happens, when that TPMS sensor goes bad and you can't read the codes off of it, you can go read them off the computer. The main computer in the vehicle is going to have all these codes inside of it. They're all going to be stored in there. And this Altel Maxi TPMS tool, it can read those codes so you can go clone the new one. If you can read this sensor, if you can read that code, at that point you could just go clone a new one. Well, say for example, you got a leaky TPMS sensor and the valve stem's leaking on it, you need to replace it. So you could just scan it and if you could read it, you could just go clone the new one. This one's completely bad, I can't even read it. So I'm gonna hook this up to the computer and I'm gonna read all the codes in there. That way I know what the code is and I can go reprogram the new one. So I'll be right back. And so to do this, go back to your main menu and go up to where it says scan all sensors. Hopefully you can see that right there, it'll say scan all sensors. And when we do this, you're gonna go around each tire that'll be showing on the screen and you scan that sensor. So I'm gonna go and select the scan all sensors. Right here, you just go around each tire that it has shown on the display and you press the Wi-Fi button until it pops up. And so I know this one's not working, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it do its thing. And so it didn't read this one, which I already knew it was gonna do because it was bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move over to this other tire on the other side by using these arrow keys. And that one showed good, so I'm gonna go to this next one. That one's good, go to the next one. And that one's good. So the next thing to do is go hook up to the car OBD2 port so I can read what that bad sensor unique identifier code is. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up to the vehicle. To do this, just hook up the cable that comes with this all tail tool. And you just wanna hook up to the OBD2 port that every vehicle after 1996, they have this OBD2 port up underneath the dashboard that you can hook to. So you just find it and you just plug into it, which for this is gonna be right here. This is an OBD2 port. And so it's plugged in and now I'm gonna go to the scan tool and read those codes. Well, so the scan tool is hooked up to the computer through the OBD2 port. Now I'm gonna go and select advanced mode. I'm gonna go and select the year and make a model of the vehicle again. And then next, I'm going to select this sensor programming that's right there. And right here, you want to say copy by OBD. So I'm going to go ahead and select yes. 
You put this ignition on. So just going started here. And I'm gonna go ahead and select yes. And it's reading the sensor IDs. And there they are, and there's all my sensor IDs. Those are all the codes that I need. So the next step is to go clone a new sensor with the old sensor unique identifier number so that it can communicate with the computer. Remember, I'm just reading the codes off the computer. I'm not reprogramming the computer or anything. I just want this unique identifier code so I could go reprogram the new one. So that's what I'm gonna do next, and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna go ahead and program this sensor with that unique identifier number that we copied off of the computer that used to belong to the old sensor that went bad. And so from the main menu, I'm gonna go ahead and select advanced mode. I'm gonna go ahead and select the vehicle again, make and model. I'm gonna go ahead and select sensor programming. Select copy by OBD. And it says use data stored previously from ECU. So I'm gonna click yes, that's the data that we just copied. And the one that was bad that I couldn't read is gonna be that left front sensor. So it's gonna be that top one. So that's the one I'm gonna be selecting because that's the one I couldn't read. So I'm gonna go ahead and select yes. I'm going to put this sensor inside of here. And there it is, a copy of that unique identifier to this new sensor. So that sensor is ready to be installed. It's all done. It's all good. So at this point, that sensor is ready to be installed inside that tire. You could take this sensor to like a tire repair shop or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and break it down and install it myself. But if you don't want to do that, you can take it to like a local tire repair shop and just have them install it. I'm going to go ahead and do that next, so I'll show you the steps on how you go about doing that. But like I said, if you don't want to do that, just take it to a tire repair shop and they'll swap it out for you. But I'm going to go ahead and swap this out, so I'll be right back. So the next thing I need to do is I need to bust the B on this tire so that I can get to that TPMS sensor. There's some different ways to go about doing this. One easy way that I use is I use this bead buster along with the cordless drill, and it just makes it much easier to bust the bead on here and get down to these TPMS sensors. If you need one of these, I'll put a link down in the description box below. But basically, that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'm going to break the bead using this bead buster. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I broke it down. That one was really easy to break down. Usually you have to hit it a bunch of times with that bead buster and push down on it. This one was really easy to break down. And there's that TPMS sensor right up inside of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap them out. These new sensors have a little clip right here where you can pop them off. You just pop off like that. You put the stem in first and then you come back and put this in. Just try to get it lined up correctly. You just have to turn a little bit to make sure it's lined up correctly when you go to put this back on. But this just pops on and then pops up.
all right so that's it i got it inside of there there it is that's what it looks like these rubber ones you just insert inside and you pull up until they seat if you have these metal ones like the old one that was in there basically you just push this up and in be sure that washer's on the outside otherwise it could leak and then just tighten it down you don't want to over tighten those types so don't start cranking on them or anything like that but either one of these types the metal type or the rubber type they're both easy to install and either one to work like i said before it's really just about preference but there's the old bad sensor and the new one's in there so the next thing i'm gonna do i'm just gonna air up the tire put it on and go and test it and see if it works so i'll be back all right, so I'm back and I got the tire mounted back on, the new sensors in there, everything like this. So the next thing to be wary of is that some vehicles need what's called a relearn, where basically the computer needs to go talk to that new sensor. Even though it does have a unique ID, the computer does need to reestablish communication with it. And quite often you could do this just by driving around a little bit. If you do have this Alltel tool, it has an option inside of here where you could go down and, and select relearn procedure. And basically that gives you the instructions or the steps needed for that particular vehicle to do a relearn which again can vary between vehicles make models things like this but like i said quite often you could just drive around and the computer automatically relearn so that's what i'm going to do right now i'm going to go ahead and start up the vehicle i'm gonna let it run for a little bit i'm gonna back up and go forward a little bit maybe drive around the block and just see if that computer reestablishes communication with that tpms sensor i'm gonna go and back up a little bit I'm not even going to drive very far. Yep, there it went, right there. It just went off. That wasn't even like 10 seconds of backing up. But so that's basically it. That's all done. That bad sensor was replaced. The new one's in there. It's working good. So that's basically it. If you have any questions, ask me down below and I'll try to answer them. If you have anything to add, please comment down below also. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.